Hello and welcome to my booktube channel, Jack in the Bookstack, where I talk about a wide variety of book genres and the bookish lifestyle. I'm going to show you what I mean by the bookish lifestyle in this video because I'm starting a new weekly reading vlog, which I'm going to be showing the bookish lifestyle. I don't have a TBR planned for this week. I just know that I have some really fun things coming up that I can incorporate reading into. So I wanted to document it and share it with you guys. I think we're gonna find out together what I decide to pick up this week because I don't want to force myself to read anything. I just wanna go with the flow. So let's start it off. I have been working on book four from the Throne of Glass series, but I'm only this far along after several months of reading it because I'm not really enjoying it. I hate the main character's POV so much. I would normally DNF it, but I am enjoying the supporting characters, the various plot lines, and the magic system, so I want to keep reading the series to see how it all comes together. I do have the goal of finishing the Throne of Glass series in 2023, so for book four I'm just trying to read a few chapters here and there in the month of July to make some progress on that goal. It's really the main character's POV that is making me feel like I need a little bit of wine. But also, it's date night tonight. So gotta pick up a Pinot Noir. I researched this pairs well with the dinner I have planned. I have been watching a lot of Gordon Ramsay lately and it has inspired me to try some new things. This is a black and Cajun salmon with cream sauce recipe that I found on YouTube. This recipe turned out so good, and it was actually a lot of fun to make it alongside my boyfriend. It was picture perfect, and I will link the recipe for you down below in case you wanna give it a try. I definitely learned some new techniques as well, and it was great flavor. Because a lot of obligations have prevented a summer vacation for my boyfriend and I, we decided to do a staycation at a local resort here in Arizona. The Montelucia is an omni resort with a Mediterranean theme that is one of my favorite places in the whole state. And that is mainly because the views of Camelback Mountain are absolutely breathtaking. I love looking at these views sitting at the pool and even this view of the carne asada french fries which is one of my favorite meals ever. Chowing down on those fries, sipping on some poolside cocktails, and hanging out with my Kindle right by the cool pool is exactly how to keep a bookworm like me happy. I picked Any Man by Amber Tamblin, and looking at this first page, you can see the poetic style it's written in. I picked this book because I was craving something horrific and thrilling. I have seen this recommended on channels Gabby Reads as her favorite book of 2023 so far, and Katie Coulson, who did a dedicated reading vlog for it. It is highly quotable, as you can see here, and it seemed to be a mix of writing styles. There were journal entries, IMs, inner monologues, poetry, which you saw. It was very, very beautifully written. I picked it up because Goodreads has it marked as a thriller or a horror book, which is what I was really in the mood for and craving, but it definitely reads more like a dark literary fiction. It's about men that are the victims of SA from a female called Maud. It covers how each man deals with the trauma, how society views them as male victims, and also SA culture overall. Not really the tone I was looking for, so time to head to dinner. We went to the on-site restaurant, which was absolutely incredible. Great, great food. And then we just had a really relaxing night, enjoying the sights at the resort at night. When we got home on Sunday morning, you can tell the dogs missed me because they will not leave my side while I finish any man. I ended up rating it five stars. It was impactful and beautifully written. While Any Man definitely gave me the darkness and substance I was looking for, I still am in the mood for something thrilling. So I'm going to pick up book two in the Devil's Night series called Hideaway. This is a dark romance of interconnected standalones. With dark romance, I'm always prepared to suspend my feminism and my sense of disbelief, which I definitely had to do with Hideaway. This also danced on the boundaries of my trigger of animal abuse. You don't actually see it, but it's just talked about that the dogs are not treated well. 
Now that I've dealt with that, time to start some dinner. I am going to go ahead and switch over to the audiobook for Hideaway, which I checked out from Libby, so I can keep reading while cooking. I'm trying this new almond crusted chicken recipe, which, well, it was kind of successful. It was a learning opportunity, but I read a couple chapters while I prepared the dinner. Time to pause my read so I can enjoy my culinary masterpiece. The weekend fun is over and it's time to go back to work. Hideaway isn't engaging me as much as Corrupt, but I am still very much looking forward to picking it up again after work. But first things first, once I log off, I have something else to do. Hello and welcome to Jack in the Bookstack, a booktube channel where I talk about a wide variety of book genres and the bookish lifestyle. Today I have my August TBR. TBR videos are some of my favorite ones to make and watch here on booktube, but I'm kicking myself because I didn't mention my pre-orders for the new T. Kingfisher and Katie Robert that I plan to read in the month of August. I was able to pick up Hideaway at this point while I was out running some errands, and I was able to finish it throughout the day. I did get the similar ick feeling to book one where there's steamy flashbacks when they're in high school and 17 years old, although most of the spice takes place in present day when they are 23. I was disappointed that there wasn't a more of an atmospheric vibe to the book since the summary promised an abandoned hotel with a missing 12th floor. This had more of a mafia romance kind of vibe, but I love how it ended. On Tuesday after work, I really want to make a lazy dinner so I can just focus on my new book. I need to regain some of my feminism after that dark romance, and I'm in the mood for something a little bit more philosophical. I Who Have Never Known Men was recommended on the booktube channel Books with Emily Fox. This is constantly mentioned as one of her favorite books of all time. It is a 188-page sci-fi dystopian about a group of 40 women who have been trapped in a bunker for as long as they can remember, until one day the doors are left open. But is that really a good thing? In Books with Emily's review, she warned us not to focus so much on the mystery of what happened, but on the deeply introspective nature of our main character. And that's the best advice I can give you in determining if you want to read this book. It is very desolate and ambiguous, and I was left feeling pretty bleak. On Wednesday, I am still craving horror, and now I want something weird. William Morrow and Harper Audio present Chlorine, a novel by James Song, performed by Catherine Ho and Dimani Parks. I have heard this book is perfect for fans of Night Bitch, which I am, because this is a weird book about a new mom who thinks she's turning into a dog. Goodreads says that Chlorine blurs the lines between a literary coming of age story and a dark, unsettling horror tale, and it's told from the adult perspective about the trials and tribulations of growing up in a society that puts pressure on young women and their bodies. This is supposed to have sapphic longing, but our main character, Ren, is not even a good friend, let alone having any longing that you are rooting for. And I think that Goodreads is playing fast and loose with what they're calling horror, because this story of a girl who thinks she's turning into a mermaid doesn't get truly weird until the very tail end of the book. Because Chlorine lacked the weirdness and horror that I was in the mood for, I ended up rating it 2.75 stars. Thursday, my first priority after work is to start editing this weekly reading vlog so it's ready to post. And the dinner update that nobody asked for, I'm gonna make a buffalo chickpea salad and try and read a couple more chapters in Queen of Shadows so I can finish it by the end of the month. I have quite a ways to go in this one. Again, this 20-ish year old main character who's like a dictator in training is driving me crazy. I am setting the atmosphere for this read though. I have this great fantasy tavern ambiance and uh, don't pay attention to these plants. Nothing to see here. Okay, I tried. I can't talk about the plot too much without spoiling the earlier books since this is book four in the series, but our main character is just very much driven by her emotions and thinks she knows everything. If she can just get knocked down a couple pegs, I think I will enjoy this a lot more. 
Well, that was my week of mood reading. Tell me, what do you think of the format of this video? I tried doing something a little bit different by doing a voiceover. I've done plenty of voiceover videos in the past, but the inspiration for this video came from the booktube channel Nerdy Nat Reads, and she did a voiceover for a travel reading vlog that I thought was really cool and very engaging. So I wanted to be cool like Nerdy Nat and do this video structure as well. So let me know if you prefer that or like sit down style like this where I talk to you about the books because I'm kind of curious uh, what you guys think. Thank you so much for hanging out with me in this reading vlog and I hope to see you in the next video.